Hi guys, okay, so this video is gonna be really different from any that I've ever done. I've got Dennis here with me for Hi. moral support and also for him to hear um, what I've written. So, a little bit of backstory. Today, I completely listened to and watched the webinar that was by um, Krista Levitt, who's a curly specialist in Canada, hosted Dr. Susan Walker who's a licensed naturopathic doctor and a certified trichologist. Um, and she also has her own hair product line called Earth Tones Naturals. So uh, it's about an hour and 45 minute video webinar that they did. And during that, um, Dr. Walker, she had a bunch of slides and then she did commentary on the slides as well. So I had to write up everything, my whole response and everything that I wanna share with you guys because this information is really important and um, I get distracted really easy and I start talking about something totally off topic and then I can't get back on track sometimes. And I'm a much better writer than I am a speaker actually. I should probably have a blog, not a YouTube channel. True. <laughs> Because I just get excited and I go all over the place. So I'm going to a little bit walk you through some of um, Dr. Walker's presentation. But the whole plan was really for me to watch it and just summarize things so that you wouldn't have to watch an hour and 45 minute video if you needed to get the information faster. Um, and then what happened was basically... 18 minutes in, she talked about porosity. And I was like a little bit caught off guard because it was a blanket statement saying that things that are porous um, lose moisture fast and dry fast. And if you have watched any of my other videos, you know that my experience and my belief is that hair that gets wet fast dries slow. and. I think Dennis can vouch for that as well. We both yeah. have been doing hair. Dennis has been doing hair for like 20 years. And neither of us have ever experienced hair that got wet quickly, took in water quickly, and then also dried quickly. No, it usually takes a long time. Yeah. You're there forever. We're there forever. The like the fast, in my experience, the faster it gets wet, the longer it takes to dry. Yeah. That doesn't much. mean, though, that once it's fully dry, it's not frizzy or anything. It's just about dry time. So... All right, so I'm going to read you guys this because I don't want this to be a 30 minute video and this is gonna be part one. It's gonna be focusing mostly on porosity. Part two is going to talk about um, damage to the hair, protein, and also treatment for, for damage and for loss of protein. Okay, so the first slides in her presentation just define the structure and the parts of the hair strand. This is like cosmetology school stuff. So in short, there's three layers of the hair strand. There's the medulla, there's the cortex, cortex and the cuticle. So the medulla is the innermost part and actually fine hair doesn't often doesn't have a medulla. It's missing a layer. Yeah, it's literally missing a layer. So it's a lot more it's a lot weaker than hair that has all three layers. Um the cortex is the core of the hair's resilience and strength. So this is like the meat of the hair strand. It needs moisture to do its job properly and it contains protein and it contains melanin. And melanin is what gives you your hair color. The cuticle is the outer layer. It protects the cortex. It looks like shingles on a roof, which is how Dr. Walker described it. I like to say the, the cuticle is like a fish and it has gills that open and close like this. And so when they're open, things go in and when they're closed, things can't get in. Um, a healthy cuticle helps to retain moisture, keep the cortex moisturized and it reflects light. So it would create shine if, if it reflects light. Yeah. Okay. So how does a healthy cuticle retain moisture? That's what I want to ask you. If moisture goes in, while the cuticle is open, it makes sense that it would get locked into the hair by closing. So I want you to keep that in mind for later. 
She then defines hair damage and begins with citing some other sources. So if you've ever done a research paper before, um, I actually went to the University of Florida. I got my Bachelor of Science in Advertising. Here, hold, let me take it off the wall. I got my Bachelor of Science in Advertising with a concentration in business in 2013. Here's my... Did I frame that? I think I framed that. Right? I framed it. You framed it? I got this frame. So there's a little thing right here that's actually because it's a note from my grandma that she wrote when I was one that I don't want to lose, so I put it in here with my diploma. Um, but yeah, you can see my my middle and last name there. My last name's Lee Blake, middle name is Michelle, first name Stephanie, that's me. So, I don't talk about that often. So in my time at the University of Florida, I actually did a lot of research. Um, when you get a Bachelor of Science in Advertising, you don't do anything creative. All you learn to do really is research. Um, qualitative, quantitative, all that. I also had an amazing class um, with an amazing TA. Uh, so that's a teacher assistant, but he taught the entire class. And he was a graduate student. His name is Kieran Valji, and he taught my writing for research class at UF. And I wrote this awesome research paper talking about how media, how the media affects our gender roles in society. Um, and I have to thank him and my time there for my ability to dissect information like this research that she shared the way that I did. Okay, moving on. So you, what you do when you do research is you, or a research paper, or this webinar that she did is she cited sources. So that means she found um, different research papers from scientific journals. So this is published by other people who say, okay, this is the conclusions we've come to. And then you can source and cite that information to form your own conclusions from that. That's what a research paper is. So she alternates between two different research papers from scientific journals for her slides. And then she ultimately, in the video finds her decision on the moisture and protein balance which is what this video is about it says curly hair myths um protein and moisture balance and that it's inconclusive because the two sources contradicted each other so i'm going to focus more on the whole protein and damage thing in my next video but let me just say that she herself said that it was inconclusive because the sources that she used were contradicting each other. One said one thing and one said the other. So something has stopped me in my tracks though. Only 18 minutes into the video was she had a slide up that lists the characteristics of damaged hair. The first characteristic was that it becomes porous. Then I heard her say, this wasn't on the slide, but if you listen, you'll hear her say, the porous hair gets wet quickly and dries quickly. You know my thoughts on porosity if you've watched any of my videos so I rewind it and I listened like two more times to make sure I heard it right and then I caught something else she also states immediately afterwards sort of quietly that health she's healthy hair is able to retain moisture retain its moisture levels so it was like this like afterthought it sounded like it wasn't stated the way in the confidence and strongness that it was stated that the hair dries quickly if it's porous it was like a smaller thing that it sounded like she was sort of reading or restating someone else's words that um healthy hair is able to retain moisture levels so that was not on the slide it was said so i'm glad i listened as well so after rewinding that, I sent Dr. Walker a DM expressing my concern because in my experience, high porosity more often dries slowly. We ended up on the phone for an hour and a half debating and then coming to what I thought was a sort of agreement or at least a place to move forward as to trying to come to a conclusion about porosity. I was really excited because I felt like I was on the verge of a breakthrough. Um, I was like... I texted Dennis, I was like, I'm all hyped up on Mountain Dew. Anyway, natural Mountain Dew. So she believes that low porosity, from our conversation on the phone, she believes that low porosity can also be a natural porosity. I've stated in the past that it's only caused by chemicals. So that being said, I think that her idea and my idea of low porosity is different. So 
she said that her low porosity clients, their hair still absorbs water and that it takes a little longer. While those I classify as low porosity, their hair literally repels water like it beads off. And that I know is not natural. She also doesn't work with hair to the extent of fully wetting it in the sink. She described something that sounds to me more like restyling, like when her clients come in and she's assessing their hair and helping them, she's not taking them to a sink and fully wetting it. She's sort of working on restyling it a little bit, touching it, feeling it. She said she feels the hair a lot to determine their needs. So a lot of you didn't know what low porosity was until I made that one minute video of me <laughs> attempting to wet low porosity in the sink. So I think my scale might be different than someone who's made their own scale, but never tried to fully wet hair that repels water. So I wanted to dig deeper into low porosity. I wanted to, to know specifically more about my eight word theory that eight words, Dennis and I are always saying eight words, um, like sulfate, right? So my theory has been from researching my clients and people who come into me with low porosity hair that if there's a few of these eight words in the beginning of a list of ingredients because they're listed in order of content, that that causes low porosity hair. She confirmed, and she's the doctor and the scientist, that ingredients that end in eight, A-T-E, are acids. And if there were a lot of them in products, it could definitely lower a person's hair porosity. She told me that the clients she helps with their hair all have healthy, natural porosities already. So that might be why, where there's a disconnect between us as well. So this is where we started to fail to get on the same page, unfortunately. But this is where my experience comes in handy. And as much as I wish I could, I can't transfer my experiences as a professional curly hair specialist and cosmetologist to anyone else. No matter what science or journals are out there, nothing can replace hands-on experience. And no one can tell you that what you see with your own two eyes and what you feel with your own two hands is wrong. And what if, if what I'm sharing is wrong, then I don't want to be right because what I'm sharing is giving those who really listen not only the best hair days of their life, but helping them save money and time by escaping the curly hair brand, Facebook group, and influencer hype. I know from experience that both healthy high porosity hair and damaged high porosity hair take longer to dry than any other hair types I work with. I'll continue to demonstrate and work to prove this, but if you have hair that gets soaking wet when you jump in and out of the pool, it's hard for me to believe that it dries up quickly. If you think it does, go watch my video on what low porosity hair looks like when you try to wet it. I have both medium and high porosity hair, medium here and high back here, and I even dunked my head into a pool to prove that the difference in the wet time and the dry time, and if you haven't watched it yet, then do that next. Mm -hmm. So now there are other factors that can affect dry time, right? Like density. Density, for sure. Level of damage, climate. Climate, big time. That's just to name a few, but there's no exact number, so stop trying to time it. Dry time and wet time, like everything else about you as a human being, are an ever-changing spectrum. You will never be able to say, my hair dries in blank amount of time. This is why we need to focus on our experience and tr not try to collect numerical and scientific data that will make us insane. What are the dogs doing? Okay. I hope you heard that. This is why we need to focus on our experience and not try to collect numerical and scientific data that will make us insane, especially when it differs so much from the experience that we're having with our hair. So, all right, here we go. Do me a solid right now. Do your very best, everything I'm about to share with you. Try to pretend you never learned anything from social media or friends or family members or whoever has been giving you your education on hair porosity. Just try to think for yourself and gain your own understanding and form your own conclusions based, based, based. Dennis ate based. <laughs> okay, gain your own understand. See, this is where I would have lost myself completely and that's why I made the notes. So just try to think from, for yourself and gain your own understanding and form your own conclusions based on the following information. First, let me define what porous means. This is from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which in the English language, language is what we use to define words. I'm getting all excited, so I'm tripping over myself. First of all, okay, so here's the definition. Porous is an adjective, 
meaning it describes the quality of something. It's a descriptive thing. It has three definitions, three parts of the definition. Part one, possessing or full of pores or containing vessels. Part two, permeable to fluids, and permeable means you can go, it, things can go inside, or permeable to outside influences. Three, capable of being penetrated, meaning things can go inside. So let's just think about this. What do you know that of that also has pores or contains vessels? Can you say it before looking? What? What do you know of that also has pores or contains vessels? Um, our skin too? Our skin. I promise you he didn't read what I, I wrote. I didn't read it. I don't even have my glasses on right now. So hopefully it was as much common sense to you as see. it just was to Dennis. He's literally blind right now. Okay. Our skin. Our skin is porous. It is permeable to fluids and it's capable of being penetrated. Our skin meets all three parts of the definition of something that is porous. So then why, when we talk about hair being porous, do the fluids or moisture penetrate the hair strand but then leak right back out? Moisture doesn't leak back out of my skin after I use moisturizer. It only starts to resurface if I sweat. So I had this epiphany literally while writing this and I've never talked to you about this before. I love making connections. It makes, I love it. Okay, so. If our skin is porous and our hair is porous and our skin doesn't push moisture back out unless we sweat, what, what, when might moisture leave our hair if it doesn't just leak out automatically? So we live in Miami and we both have fully healthy hair and we rarely use styling product. Yeah. Now, I really rarely use it. I have it in today and that's because I wanted to I'm not going to get into that. I have it in today, but I rarely use styling product. When I don't use styling product, my hair looks great. You can watch other videos to see that, but usually you'll have seen it after I've been outside because I tend to make videos after later in the day, not like right away in the morning after washing my hair. So it's not until I get hit with some serious South Florida humidity that my hair starts to get dry and frizzy. Then the hair strands start to separate and it feels a little drier and it looks a little frizzier, right? If the hair separates, it's gonna, that's frizz. So the humidity has caused my hair to sweat, sweat out the moisture. Nice. Are you proud of me? Proud of you. Literally, Dennis just got home and like, I've been doing this before he got home. Okay, so styling products and conditioner can help prevent this from happening. I've chosen the frizz life though. That's why I still don't wear styling products most of the time, even though I live in Miami, but maybe the frizz life chose me because I have curly hair. Our hair is harder to moisturize, it just is. So anyway, okay, so now what, Stephanie? Like, now what do we do? What's porosity? What'd you figure out? Break it down, make it simple. So I'm gonna make a chart. I'm gonna write this all out for you guys. I'm gonna put it in a blog post, but for now, this is what you get because this is what I have time for, okay? So when it comes to porosity, as it, as it pertains to the cuticle and the way the hair behaves, there are three types. Type one, healthy, normal porosity. This is the goal for every single person. This is hair that has not been damaged by bleach or box dyes, abused by heat, chemical straighteners, or perms. The cuticle accepts water into the cortex at a variety of rates of time, but it also closes and locks in water, keeping the cortex moisturized and therefore the hair strand as well. It will get wet when you try to wet it, but there is a range for how long that can take. However, the water does not bead off the hair. Dry times vary, and they are not part of the definition of porosity. Type two, damaged high porosity. This is hair that has a damaged cuticle due to one of the practices I just mentioned that natural, normal hair porosity doesn't do, right? Bleach, box dyes, heat, chemical straighteners, perms. Damaged high porosity has done one of these things. The cuticle is split or frayed and therefore open permanently and the cortex is exposed. But the openings in the cuticle don't go straight through the hair strand like holes so that water flows as quickly out as it goes in. 
the cortex, that core part of the hair strand that loves and needs moisture, absorbs the water that is penetrating the hair strand, which is a lot of water because there is no protection from the cuticle and it doesn't stop or limit the inflow of water because the cuticle is just open. So it's all coming in. In my experience at the salon, extremely damaged hair takes the longest to dry of any kind of hair that I work with, even longer than natural, healthy, high porosity. Would you agree with that so far? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Dennis will have to think about it more. And you yeah. guys probably have to think about it too. He's a processor. But so far, anything stand out no, to you as wrong? No, it's good. And he would tell me too. I would. Okay. Three. Don't decide because Dennis decided. Decide for yourself. So type three is low porosity hair, which is caused by highly acidic hair products. Think the eight words. Think the first ingredients in a list, they're the highest quantity of that product. Are you seeing a few eight words, words that end in eight? Those are acids. Okay. This is hair that behaves the opposite of damaged hair. The cuticle is nearly impossible to open. It needs to be opened in order to get moisture into the cortex and begin the healing process of the cortex and cuticle. But that requires a lot of work with high quality ingredients and using warmth to help open the cuticle and keep it open so that water, 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 and the nutrients can get inside the hair strand. Deep conditioning with heat for 20 minutes with high quality ingredients only can help speed up the healing process. And that time can vary a little bit, but 20 minutes is a good medium. A routine, the heat opens the cuticle. That's why deep conditioning is only conditioning that's done with the cuticle open. Okay, a routine of exclusively high quality ingredients and a new love affair with water are the fast track to healing the dried out cuticle and cortex so the hair can hold moisture again. Low porosity is not a life sentence but you need to determine if you have it and speak to a professional curly hair specialist about how to heal it. Or you can follow my videos and follow my advice on how to heal it. And I'm going to follow up these videos with way more information on that because it's so important because extremely low porosity hair is so dry and brittle. It breaks as fast as it grows. And I want to see women with coily hair down their backs, but if it's dry, it's never going to get there. Okay. I got okay, a little carried away. Thank God I have the notes, right? Okay, in my experience, this type of hair, low porosity hair, dries the fastest of any hair type I work with. If the root area though is not low porosity, which is common because the natural oils are still able to moisturize that hair in some cases, it depends on how acidic the shampoo is and how long it's been being used for then the root area would take longer to dry than the rest of the hair. It's possible to have different porosities throughout the hair. Yep. For example, I'll have clients who are using bad shampoo <clears throat> and their hair is all low porosity from the bad shampoo, but their over bleached ends are high porosity. So that hair gets defined and the rest of the hair doesn't. Have you experienced that? Yeah, I've seen that. It's like all nothing and then the bleached parts have curl because it's taking in water because of the damaged cuticle. It doesn't mean it's healthy. It doesn't mean it's a good thing. These are just the things that happen and we just need to understand. Hair doesn't lie at the end of the day. Yes. The hair doesn't lie. Results. Results are our religion. That's all that matters. All I care about is that you get it and you fix it. Okay. So why is there a widespread belief that all high porosity hair, including high porosity that's healthy, loses moisture fast and dries quickly? So after my phone conversation with Dr. Walker, I had her send me the excerpt from the source of her information that she used to form her conclusions about porosity and loss of moisture. I realized right away what was wrong with this article. Although Dr. Walker understood what it was saying, I could see how easily it would be to misunderstand. And let me tell you why. So the author of these papers, or at least this one that she cited for this information, made a simple sentence structure error. If you've taken a writing or English class before, you may remember the teacher talking about the use of subjects and objects in a sentence. The subject of the sentence is the thing or person the sentence is referring to. Like if I say, 
Dennis has curly hair. The subject is Dennis. The object is curly hair. Okay, moving on. Get it. Get it, perfect. I can make it simple, even though it's not simple. Okay, <laughs> the subject of the sentence is a thing or person the sentence is referring to. You can use the name of the person or the thing, like I said, Dennis, or you can use a pro pronoun like, he has curly hair. Now, how would you know who I'm talking about unless the rest of the paragraph and the par sentences before and after make it clear who the subject is? So the sentence before would need to have the same subject as the sentence that we're using the pronoun in, and that would need to be obvious. Otherwise, you're like, who's he, right? We need to make sure we you know it's Dennis, Dennis. right? Because otherwise, we might be talking about someone with, we might think we're talking about someone with straight hair or wavy hair. And that would be wrong, right? Okay. That would be wrong, right? Right. So pronouns like he, she, or we, they are can be used, but they still need to refer to the actual subject. Sometimes it can be confusing who the sentence is referring to unless the sentence is before and after. I already said that without reading the thing. Anyway. So hopefully I'm not losing you here. This paragraph that she sent me had five sentences. The first... And the, the goal of this paragraph was to explain loss of moisture and moisture retention in healthy versus damaged hair. So the first sentence and the third sentence described healthy hair. The second, fourth, and fifth were describing damaged hair. The ring light's freaking out. Mercury in retrograde is like flashing. It's okay. your energy. It's your energy. It's my energy. You're fired. Okay. So the... The second, fourth, and fifth sentences described damage hair. However, the author failed to properly name the subject of the second sen sentence. Instead, they just said hair. Instead of saying healthy or damaged hair to clarify what kind of hair they were talking about. So this error makes the reader think that the second sentence Second sentence is also referring to healthy hair because the first sentence referred to healthy hair, unless you really pay attention to what the rest of the paragraph says. So, thank you, Dennis. So let me read you the paragraph and then we'll break it down. The healthier the hair, the more difficult it is for chemical solutions to penetrate and the longer it takes to air dry the hair. Sentence two, moisture loss occurs because the hair is more ready and willing to let the natural moisture escape the inner fiber into the atmosphere. Sentence three, healthy hair is well able to maintain its moisture levels. Sentence four, both porosity and moisture loss are a result of cuticle damage. Sentence five, simply put, the cuticle layer is no longer tightly aligned and is no longer providing adequate coverage to the inner hair shaft. This is such a confusing paragraph. It is so easy to misinterpret, and this lack of clarity is what's causing so much misinformation. It's so easy to read the second sentence that says, so if the second sentence says moisture loss occurs because the hair is more ready and willing, the hair, right, just the hair, not damaged hair just, or healthy hair, just says the hair. Moisture loss occurs because the hair is more ready and willing to let the natural moisture escape the inner fiber into the atmosphere. The next sentence says, healthy hair is well able to maintain its moisture levels. Then we need to read that and realize that the sentence before wasn't referring to healthy hair because it's contradicting if so. So it must be referring to damaged hair, but the author did not make that clear. And I'm gonna, I'll put the paragraph in the description for you so you can read it for yourselves and see what you think. Okay, I just tried to like, it was, it's a laptop, I can't um, scroll, use my finger. Up. I'm so used to using a phone, I'm never on my laptop. Okay, ready? We're gonna close this out. You ready for it? Ready. Okay, thanks for being here, you're the best. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I can only imagine how many other grammatical or other types of errors are causing miscommunication and confusion on the internet. All I can say is professional stylists who work with curly hair for over a hundred hours a month, we know what we're talking about. I can't do your hair from behind a screen, but I am going to keep doing everything I can to help people that I may never meet. It's up to you if you wanna accept that help or if you wanna continue in the circles of influence you've been in. 
But no matter what, we have to stop taking some information and not the full information and making blanket statements about our hair. For example, high porosity is damaged or high porosity dries fast. There should be asterisks within those sentences leading to a deeper explanation of when those things might be different from what it's saying. For example, asterisk. High porosity can also be a natural and healthy porosity. However, damaged hair and extreme low porosity from chemicals are not natural. That's the missing part. And there's missing stuff all over the place because you can't just give half the information. When you do that, you leave people to fill in the blanks who don't have the education and information they need to fill the blanks in properly. So I'm gonna keep filling in the blanks for you guys. So, okay. All right, let's, let's go do something. Okay, I rest my case on porosity. If I haven't helped you to understand with this information and all of the other information on porosity that I've provided by now, I am never going to be able to get you there and maybe just find another channel to watch. Nothing else I try to teach you will make sense if you don't get on the same page as me about porosity. Anyway, so the next video, because I have a lot more to talk about, I'm gonna talk about protein and moisture, uh, how to treat it, help you really understand the real deal on hair, what protein is in the hair naturally, what happens and how we lose protein and how you can fill those protein gaps if you need to and who needs to. And I'm gonna make it super obvious and simple and you won't have to overthink it or worry about it. But that's gonna be my next video on my new Texture Tuesday. So we're a little bit past midnight right now, but I am technically started this video on Texture Tuesday, which I'm trying to limit my social media YouTube days to Tuesdays now because I have to also have a life with my husband. I love you, thank you. Okay, so subscribe to the channel. Um, say nice things, because I know I'm gonna get bullied pretty badly, and I like when I hear read nice things. And um, follow me on Instagram at the Curl Ninja. Comments as much as you want. Say all the things you want to say, but try to be nice. And even if you have a differing opinion, try to be respectful. Respect each other. Love yourself. Love each other. Have a wonderful rest of your week until I get to speak to you again. Adios. Ciao. <laughs>